Welcome to this session that I've prepared for you on how you can use NLMS to do daytime astronomy education. Now, let me show you this. This is an image composed of several images. It's one photographer who's taking a picture of the sky during daytime at a fixed time of day. And he's tried to take at least one image every week. Now, for each image, he gets a white dot where he finds the sun. Then afterwards, he combined all his little images of the sun with a background image or a landscape image. And what he noticed, and what everyone who does this exercise notices, is that the sun doesn't sit, stop or stay in the same position every day, even though we choose the same time of day. Now, Analemmas are traditionally made at noon. You can do this every time of the day that you prefer, but if you do it at noon, you will get this result, or something very close to it. You get a vertical figure eight, which is slightly thinner in the top and wider in the bottom. Now let's take the days and the months each separately here. The topmost dot is the position of the sun at 60 degrees north at noon. It's at its highest in the sky because it's summer solstice. And just a couple of weeks later, when we observe the sun's position again, the dot happened to be slightly to the left and further down. So the up and down motion, it's very well known from before. It's the motion of uh, the solar height due to the tilt in the rotational axis of the Earth. But in addition to that, you have a sideways motion. For some reason, the Sun doesn't move in this height difference vertically. And we'll come to the explanation soon. But let's just follow how the dots move in this analemma. So, in the top curve going from the summer solstice, it kind of moves counterclockwise. It goes down on the left side, which will be closer to the east. And then afterwards, it crosses its own orbit, heads towards the right side. So it's actually then leading ahead of the kind of the real time or the real 12 o'clock before it stops again or the sideways motion kind of zeroes out in the bottom. There we're at the winter solstice. And just after the winter solstice, the sun starts climbing, but then actually going towards the east again. So we have this figure eight and it gets us asking why. Now, this is part of this uh, uh, explanation comes from the fact that we use something called mean solar time. Now, we all know that the rotational axis of the Earth is slightly off compared to the ecliptical plane. So the equator, which is kind of the projected line of our Earth rotation, isn't in the same plane as the ecliptic. What we define as a day or 24 hours is the rotation of the Earth until the point where we have the, the Sun in the south again. But there is a slight difference from every day the rotation happens. The rotation is actually composed of two motions. It's the Earth rotation itself going around itself one time, 360 degrees, and then afterwards it's one extra degree from the fact that the Earth has actually moved one degree uh, around the Sun. This little extra degree in the end, that motion is along the ecliptic, while the Earth rotation is along the equator. These two aren't parallel, not everywhere. Close to the vernal and the autumn equinoxes, they are not parallel. Then it's like in the diagram to your right. So if you project the Sun 
towards the equator, which is what we actually do when we use the sun as a clock or an, and when we define one day to be 24 hours. You get a sun which is slightly differently positioned from the mean solar time. While in the left image, you will find this is like the summer solstice and you'll find a similar image for the winter solstice. The equinox, no, the um, ecliptical and the equator are actually parallel and things get more easily mathematically. This results in kind of a speed difference. If you'd observe how many minutes does it take or the hours does it take for the sun to actually rotate around us or move around us once, as observed from the Earth, it seems to go faster during the winter and summer than it does during spring and autumn. So what we're doing with an lemma is actually trying to catch and document this motion. So let me show you a safer way of observe the analemma than using a camera. And this is how it's been done at a high level school in Norway, where the science teacher took the students on a project. Well, at first, actually, as you see on this wall, it wasn't this black uh, board. They had a grey board which covered a larger area. But above this grey board, there was a pole. You can see the pole there now. It has a, a small plaque towards the wall, which just keeps it up. And in the end, facing towards us, it has a little black plate with a little hole in it. So the sun can shine through that and it casts a little light dot on this grey board that was on the wall. And every day at noon, the teacher was out or the students was out and they made a little marking on the grey wall. After a full year, they got the drawing, which is to our right, but actually flipped over. So in the first example I show you, they took, there was someone who'd taken the picture on the, on the heaven, while here you use a shadow and you get the reflected analemma with the larger lobe in the top and the smaller lobe in the bottom. You can also see that it's slightly slanted because the wall wasn't exactly facing south. So this is possible to do practically everywhere you are. If you have a, a wall facing southwards, eastwards, westwards, you can do it. You have to choose a time of day where you're certain that you can actually do the observation every day. And uh, of course, if someone plans to go on vacation and leave the school for a long time, you need to make watch lists so that someone is there to mark the sun's position throughout the year. Let me show you some other products of this. So these are analemmas uh, made at different times. The left image is an analemma which is made at 12 o'clock. It's actually been uh, reversed, I can see now, so that was my bad, but the image is just upside down. It's meant to be the other way around. But either way, that's the typical analemma like in the image I just showed you. The right and the biggest image is uh, on the wall facing east. And the person who's made them has made analemmas for four different clocks, seven, eight, nine, and 10 in the morning. And then you get slightly different shapes of them. And of course, the one at the latest time will get longer and longer as the projection kind of gets more um, other directions. You can make this everywhere in the world. This is uh, an analemma in Kenya, which is very, very nicely made. It's made in the morning and you can actually read the uh, latitude of the observing place. This is two degrees south. You will also find analemmas in sundials and various museums. So I recommend start looking around and see if you have an analemma close to where you live. Now, it's probably none of us who's going to go to the North or the South Pole to do an analemma. So let's just break the news right now. If you should ever do that and go and make the analemma, this is how it would look, where the bottom of the image is the horizon. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. Start making something that can make a nice shadow on your wall facing that south 
and start marking the sun's position every day. Thank you very much for walking, watching and have a still nice workshop.